genres. I've been working for a long, long time. And then um, I had just done this movie, Jesse's Girls, and um, I was rapping, and somebody, one of the people in the film said to me, would you like to do some voice work? I had some audition, an audition for some voice work. I said, yeah, and I said, do you mind if I bring my husband? I mean, not my husband, my boyfriend. <laughs> He's since become my husband. <laughs> so you two are married? We are. Oh, you guys are so fact, cute. Uh, as of two days ago, we've been married for 32 years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That it's really inspiring, especially nowadays when you see so many different divorces coming up. It's true. For people my so age, it's inspiring. <laughs> well, you know, I think longevity in anything is about prioritizing and commitment. When you when you roam around and you just search for that 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 high high heartbeat. You're you're looking for uh, the first three months of any relationship. When when you're with when you're with someone for a long time, you, you go through hills and valleys and you journey together. You have a commitment and you make that commitment work. That's your priority. Right. That's beautiful. That's a great question. Uh, first of all, I have a website, ellensturm.com. Uh, My website is there, and then you can also go find me on Facebook, and you can find me on Twitter. On Facebook, I'm Ellen Stern Epicard because of my children and because of my children's books. Okay. And do you have a YouTube channel too? I'm sorry, do you have a YouTube channel? Um, I don't, I don't, but my videos are on YouTube. Okay. What but is, I should do that. You Thank you. They're What's your favorite favorite project that you've been part of? You know, uh, I have it, it's it's so hard to say what my favorite project is. Um, if I look at each one of these uh, here, I mean, I was bleach in bleach. I was Masaki Kurosaki. Um, I was in Blue Dragon. I play a bunch of characters in there. One of them is Jiro's mother. Um, I'm, I'm in. Uh, God, it's so hard to do this. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put any pressure on you to pick um, one. Anyhow, uh, I am on IMDb, Ellen Stern at IMDb. Uh, I'm in Bleach, I'm in Ghost in the Shell, uh, Innocence, I play Haraway in that. Uh, I'm uh, in Armitage, I'm in Noen, I play my Yuki go to, I'm in Gundam Unicorn. I play uh, Martha Viss Carbine, I play a real evil villain. And I love doing villains. Yeah. That's, I think doing villains would be fun because you get to laugh a lot. This isn't a laughter one. She's, she's just kind of like this. And she's just very naked. <laughs> and she's very understated. But when she says... You know, I didn't do that if you are your ass. That you can be bad. Yeah, that's scary. It's scary. <laughs> that is pretty scary. Um, one of my favorite things that I just did, directing wise, I just directed Star Wars, into Star Wars Part 4, A New Hope, into the Navajo language. Oh, I heard about that project when I was in New Mexico. I directed it. That's really cool. She, they, uh, do you want to tell a little bit about the project? Well, basically, what happened is, during the 1860s, the U.S. government wanted to kill all the Indians. 
obviously just and they mission. then they came up you know, with another idea. Well, we'll gentrify them. So they took the children when they were the four and five years old, sometimes fiction, not even telling the parents. You know, allow for they a lot took of them to and other states and they put them now, into what they epic, called Indian schools. If the children yeah, tried to speak any of their languages, their mouths were soaked. If they tried to celebrate any of their culture, their mouths were soaked. I'm working with them. And so, the, so when you come up to the, this happened from the 1860s through to the 1970s, which was a very long time. So anyhow. Doing Star Wars into the Navajo language was a way to inspire these people to relearn their language, relearn their culture. And at the end, at the premiere, people cried and wept and said, I am going to learn my language, I'm going to learn more about my culture. And now, in the Navajo uh, culture, on the reservations, they have these things called immersion schools, where they're teaching the kids science and history and math, all in their own language. That's beautiful. That is really mm -hmm. amazing. And and no, uh, and not only the Navajos, but the Cherokees, the Chiricahuas, the I, I mean all the tribes. It's terrible to take somebody's language, somebody's beliefs, somebody's culture, and obliterate them. I mean, that is horrible. It's a holocaust. It is. It is. It's a holocaust to do this to people. And nobody should ever have that done. And uh, I feel very, very strong. Well, thank you for taking the steps towards, not, not that we'll ever be able to rectify it, but towards starting to heal the relationship between uh, Americans and the Native Americans. It's very important. And if you go back with the DNA, and you go back and you look where people originated, people all started in Africa. And then they went into Asia, then they went into Europe, and then they came down, well, the people that went to Asia then went to Europe, and then they ran around to the Bering Straits and came down through North America and then down into uh, Mexico. So we all emerge, mankind all emerge from the same people. Exactly. So we all have Neanderthals. We all have uh, we all have something of the origins within all of us. So to separate us and to to kill somebody that is different, to not honor them is just so so wrong. And and it's time that we start recognizing this and we start coming together. It's really I agree. Tough. I agree. I, I've always felt really bad because, like, the Indians have such a small amount of land where, when they had such a humongous, the whole United States was there. And then we just gave them, like, a piece of the land and said, this is what you get to call home. And I personally don't think that's right. And then making them, you know, live in a house instead of a tent, it's, it's not. Well, no, I mean, people now want to live in houses. Well, I know, but that yeah. bad making them do it. I mean, the tent was just the only thing that they could do. You know, but, uh, I mean, having been on the reservation and spent time there, they've got an amazing culture. The Navajos have the four corners, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and... Um, like this, um, what is the other one? Right Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. <laughs> and what is the other one? Oklahoma? Utah? Is it Utah? Yes. Oh, it's Utah. <laughs> anyhow, uh, anyhow, it's, it's amazing. 
But anyhow, I mean, we're, we're off, you know, what this is, but this is so important. And everybody should take the time to honor to honor the Indian culture. Is, because they are part of us. Is the Star Wars remake that you guys did available to the general public? Yes, it is. You can find it on Amazon, and it sells at Walmart. You can find it online if you put up uh, uh, Star Wars uh, for A New Hope, Navajo. Yeah. And did you completely reshoot a Star Wars? No, we did not reshoot anything. Actually, Richard did the ADR adaptation. He wrote the script. Okay. And we had two translators that were on it. And uh, they worked with me in the studio. That's fun. <clears throat> Anyhow, it, it was an amazing, amazing project. Um, another project that I directed, which was really wonderful, was uh, Farewell, My Queen. And uh, that was a period piece in the story of Marie Antoinette. And uh, that's an amazing film. And we dubbed that into English. And also, Delicacy, which was with Audrey Tattoo. But anyhow, all of my, all of my projects can be found at Ellen Stern and IMDb. Incidentally, I do have projects coming up, more books. And, and Richard and I are going to be doing a sitcom together. Oh. So, um, you know. That's really good. What's the sitcom today? Um, it's called Soccer Mom. Soccer, Soccer Mom? Mom? <laughs> and when would that be coming out? Well, we're, we're, we're not sure. Okay. We're not sure at this time. Oh, speaking of which, I do have a series that I did with Debbie Allen. It's called Milk and Honey and Idris Elba, where I play uh, a tough Hollywood agent, kind of like Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> and then also I have, uh, oh, I, I have uh, a film that I did called Blood on Canvas, I'm one of the leads in, and uh, that's going to be coming out. And then I have a new animated feature out right now, and that's called Wrinkles. What's that about? It's starring Martin Sheen, Matthew Modine, George Poe, and myself. What? Uh, it's about it's about uh, a senior home and two elderly men who forge a breakout <laughs> out of the senior home. <laughs> and it's very funny and it's very touching. Do you consider yourself a really funny person? Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> I think so. That's good. You have to have humor. You have to. But also, I mean, I also consider myself a very serious human, uh, serious person. Uh, I hate being pigeonholed. I mean, I know it's all part of branding. My brand is I'm eclectic, <laughs> and I love being eclectic. It doesn't seem like you can hold yourself to one thing or the other. You're all over the, the spectrum. I think so. I think so. That's fun. And we have two children. My husband, Richard, and how old are they? Well, uh, our son is 30, and he just got married, and he's on Broadway. Nice. Oh, wow. His name is John F. Carr, and uh, he was on Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark on Broadway as the drummer. And his band, Carney, uh, became part of it. The lead singer for Carney became Spider-Man. And the musicians... Uh, worked in the orchestra. But anyhow, Spider-Man has ended, and now he's on to Lion King, and he's, uh, he's also uh, 
played on Re he's on Rihanna's and John Legend's new albums, and um, he's all over the place. And our daughter Jacqueline Neffar is a singer. She sings jazz and blues. Did you start them real young, learning an art? Well, they I started them in music, but then. Uh, they took out a life of their own. <laughs> I used to take our son every uh, every week to jazz and blues clubs. Oh yeah. And uh, so I just started started jamming very young. That's I think that jamming with young kids is really important. I know they have mommy and me classes where the kids can are just learning how to toddle, but you just put instruments in front of them so they can learn how how to make sounds with them, like tambourines and maracas. Well, you know, I think it's about exposing kids to everything. I think that the more you expose them to, it's like I would take them to museums all the time. And they go, oh, mom wants to go to a museum. It's Mother's Day. Oh, it's museums. Okay, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> but I expose them to everything. And, you know, to art into history, into music, into theater, into films, and um, I mean, they grew up with, you know, us as actors, so they, they couldn't avoid it. They couldn't. <laughs> That's true. As a matter of fact, one day, our daughter, I said to our daughter, this guy is a scientist. She said, no, everybody's an actor. I said, no, not everybody's an actor. She was very little. But, you know, she was talking from our circle. Right. You know. So, but it's funny. But, you know, I, I think one of the greatest things in life is to do what you love and to do your passion and to do it as much as you can, as fully as you can. Yes. And yeah, then we did, we did a remake of that show. And then to, to have a life of love, love to have a life where you yeah. have children. Oh my god, oh my god. This is the greatest thing of all. And incidentally, our son just got married. <laughs> and he got married to a lady named Tyler Gilstrap. She was one of the choreographers for the winter. And she's a dancer choreographer. And I want to get a picture with you, that's awesome. Oh, please. She was one of the choreographers for the Winter Olympics, and so she brushed the opening ceremonies. That's really impressive. I haven't seen that. That is. So, what up? And they just got married. <laughs> You're so, you, I can see the pride all over your face of, of him getting married. <clears throat> it's amazing, it's amazing. Because what I find is that we do our thing, and our children now, they have flown. I mean, the greatest art of loving, Eric Fromm said, is learning to let go. And so we've raised our children, and now they have flown, and they're doing their own thing, and it's glorious to watch them fly. <laughs> and that's the greatest thing. It is. Watching your, your children do something, and they love it, and they enjoy it, and knowing that you had something to do with that is really makes a parent's heart just bloom over. Now, did you ever think that any of your children might go into acting or... Her daughter does acting also. She's also a model. And so, but I think her passion is singing. And I mean, and I think that's really important is to let everybody follow their own passion. Right. You know? And it's like, here we are at the convention, at the gaming convention, and it's like, if what I have done, if the roles I have done impact somebody in a positive way, and they're able to enjoy them, I'm happy. I'm fairly sure that the things that you've done have impacted in a positive way. I know people who watch animes, um, I, you've been in a fair amount of... Over 30 years. And uh, I know people who watch them and they give them just this connection to people who they might not actually be around them, they might not be in their school or in their community, but they know that there's other people out there. 
Well, you know, I've not only done, as a voice actress, um, I've not only done anime, I've done voice work, uh, voiceovers, narration, uh, I do games, I do a lot of games, yeah. and so it's not limited to anime. Oh, yeah. That's where we start. Yeah. That's a, it's a fun place to start. <laughs> it definitely is. Definitely is. And I uh, see that your husband has been in Final Fantasy. I was in Final Fantasy. Oh, you were too? That is... I've got to check my IMDb. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. No, That's don't be. Fine. It's just my son's like all time favorite game is Final Fantasy. Oh. So when he actually sees this and sees that I'm actually out of yeah, he's going to be so jealous that he didn't come. Oh. Yeah, he will be. <laughs> um, so you said that you started getting into voice acting after having already done actress. I've been an actress my whole life. That doesn't stop. That doesn't I don't stop. stop one thing to do now. Did you, when you uh, transferred over to, not transferred, but just for that first time into voice acting, was it a real shock just not being able to, to work no, with your face? No, it was very natural. One of the things I also do is a lot of stage. I'm also a classically trained actress. Um, I mean Shakespeare. <laughs> you know all the all the greats. Definitely. Um, as a matter of fact, I belong to uh, the Classical Theater Lab Company group in, in Los Angeles, and I starred in Exit the King, which was done on Broadway. Um, it's it's a classical piece that was written actually. By Ionesco. <laughs> Eugenie Ionesco. So I do a lot of stage too. But to answer your question, stage is very akin to voice. Okay. So it wasn't difficult at all. It was natural. That's really good. Thank you. Because I know uh, sometimes it is hard to, to go from from one aspect of a world into another aspect. It sometimes can be, but I, I think that it's like somebody said to me the other day, what is, did you know when the spark happened that you were there? And I said, you know, my career is a journey. Everybody's career is a journey. There isn't that point where you go, this is it. There's, there's hills, there's valleys, and the journey goes up and down. And so, I think a journey happens through your own passion. So if you find your passion and you just keep doing your passion, then you find your journey and the career has a path that starts to unveil. But the spark is now there. The spark comes from within. That's good. Now, for any actress or actor <coughs> just starting off, what would you suggest for them? Do you have any advice for them? Yes. Do acting classes, do voice classes, do singing classes, do, do dance classes, do yoga, take, take classes everywhere you can, learn all aspects of the business. I had no idea I was going to be a voice actress. It happened. It evolved. When an opportunity comes about, if you have done your training, you will be ready for it. And you can't have a narrow place that you, you just want to be. When I was 12 years old, I was in love with Shakespeare. And I said, I want to be a Shakespearean actress. Well, Shakespeare's a little limited. <laughs> You have to be well versed, you have to have a broad range of, of experience and of knowledge. So that is the best advice I can give, is to know everything. And learn history, learn science, learn everything. 
because all that knowledge is what you bring to the character and learn script analysis. Analyze your scripts, analyze your characters so that you can have a fully dimensional character. Even as a voice actress, I have a 3D character that I bring. Read plays. <laughs> when you were um, asked to do, if you're asked to do like a very, a character that you've never done before. I'm always asked to do a <laughs> Do you do a lot of research into that type of character? Yes. You have to do research into your character. You have to do research into the writing. Know the writer. Um, know, know what kind of stuff he's done. It's like one of the things I did was I did George Bernard Shaw's uh, uh, Mrs. Warren's profession. I played Mrs. Warren. I'm going to actually do it again in a week. And uh, if you know what the writer is about. He was quite a feminist for his time. And uh, Pygmalion was really a, a feminist play. He was making a statement that women are suppressed. Anyhow, if you know your writer, that gives you knowledge as to the character, as to the play. Know your play. Read it over and over and over again. Uh, know your know your character because the more research you do on the play, on the character, the better off you be. That kind of brings me back to a question I had back to the Star Wars Navajo thing. Did you actually learn Navajo yourself? I learned a handful of words. Yeah. What's your favorite Navajo word? Nijone. Nijone. And that means beautiful. Beautiful. Nijone. Yeah. And um, did you learn a lot about the way that their culture thinks and the way that their culture processes the world oh, around them? yes. And that was beautiful because they are non-competitive. They are non-ownership kind of people. They are sharing. They are respectful. They are kind. They bring a sweetness and a love to humanity that I think we all need to incorporate. That's that's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> that is. I have met a few Navajo people. I haven't been able to to visit the the preserve reservation. reservation. You should. I think we should. <laughs> Well, do you have any more questions, Lady Rage? No. I do want to say thank you, though, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to interview you and learn about your experience and learn so much about what you do and what you believe in and to enjoy the passion that you have when you're talking about the stuff that you believe in. It's really inspirational for me. But I know it's going to be very inspirational for us. It's my pleasure. And, and I think that is, that is uh, the way of life. If we can share with each other and bring some love and some kindness along the way to each other, then I think when we look back at the life, what have we done to make our little corner a little bit nicer? We can't always heal the world, but we can heal our own little corner if we can just spread a little bit of joy and a little bit of love. Very inspirational. Thank that you. Is, that is a... Um, I forgot that word again. Um, Mahovo? Najoni. Najoni. That is Najoni. <laughs> Najoni is beautiful. Thank you.